So actually, the main, the main here, the, the topics we are going to cover, which is listed in the top left, already discussed in the beginning of this video. So actually, what I'm going to do in the first part, I would like to show you, for example, how you can calculate the distance between two different data sets. Assume here, for example, you have these blue points. Let's hide this sector for now. You have the blue points and you have the red points. I would like to calculate the distance from the blue points to the red points, or the opposite way around, depend on whatever you need. So this is, for example, can be used if you would like to calculate the distance and inter-site distance between different sites, or even up to five, four, three sites based on whatever you come at, requirement you're looking for. So in this case, you can just go to the processing toolbox. Under this one, there is a tool called distance. This will find the actor vector, vector analysis. And if you double click here, see here what's asking you for. It's asking you for what is your input there. So for example, I would like to create from the blue points and let's explore this kind of information first, just to see what you have. If you right click here on the blue points, just open an attribute table. So if you look into that, you have many information here. For example, you have the code 1003 and so on. So if I take this one as a source layer, I'm expecting to get the nearest distance from this particular point to the other points. For example, the blue points 1003 to the others. And if you make this one minimum, for example, here is an option asking you how many target points are like for example if i give two target points so i'm expecting to get two points two distance from each of the, uh, these single points. for example one zero zero three it will give two points from the red one so let's see this red points for example if you right click here of an attribute table as well so this one just showing that we have in total 17 points so if i give two points for, from the other one i'm expected to get at least two out of these points so let's now select our tables for example, this input there, I need to get it as a sector, sector addition, which is this blue dots or blue points. Here, let's take it on the right. And the unique, I need to get it by, I need just to list it, for example, in my new table. This will create a generate a new table. I need it by Q2, which was showing 1003, for example. And the target points would be this blue dots or red dots, sorry, which is called points here. Then it's giving idea. So I need the first uh, two, for example, the nearest two points here. So let's make run and see what we'll get. Once you run it here, actually, you'll see that in the top, in the bottom left here, you will find a new sheet was being generated here called distance matrix here, this one. If you right click and open attribute table, you'll find that this one now, as we, this, as we uh, expected, you have this input, which is called 1003, for example, and the nearest two IDs, target ID seven and eight, and here is giving the distance. And for sure, it will be repeated for the others. And since it's within the same location, it will give almost the same distance here, or the same distance, exactly the same distance here. So this is actually the best benefit. And as I told you, you can use it, for example, to calculate inter-site distance. And here you can just close this one. And if you need it into, for example, CSV file, you can, if you remember, right click, then you go to export, then save feature as, and you can just change the format. Then the format to CSV an example, then you can just take three dots and export it to any location you, are, you would like to take. Then this is the first point. The second point, assume now you would like to draw lines, for example, from this point to from 1000 to, for example, the, this, this red dots and to calculate the distance as well. So this is also another method, which is if you see here, method to draw line. We have many different methods, but here I'm going to explain two. First one, cool to, to nearest half, for example. Nearest half. See here, it's called distance to the nearest half, line to half. So let's click this one, double click, and see what we'll get. Again, it will ask you for similar information. What is your source point uh, layer? For example, let's give the opposite way around. I would like to calculate from the red to the blue. So I will take the here, the points, and the blue one, which is called sector addition. So actually, my hub, my hub now, which is a sector addition. So I'm expecting to get the source layer as ID for these points and toward, toward this hub. And here you can just define the meters here. So this is based on meters to get the calculation or distance based on meters. So if you run it now, you will get a new sheet here called in the bottom left here. Let's close this one called half distance. Right click, make open attribute table. See now this is what I'm expecting. That for example, ID one, we have 2000 and this is the nearest, nearest point. And the ID two, I have also 2000. So it's calculated for each point. The for example, this one you can see it's having many surrounding points. So these old points are being calculated towards the 2000. And the same here for 1000, for example, there is two points giving the seven, for example, this one and this one showing you what is the distance toward this one. 
And this then for 9,000, for example, it's showing three ones, this one and this one and this one. And the 4,000 showing, for example, here you can see one point and so on. So just giving the nearest for each and every single of these red dots towards the blue dots. And you can just even make it the opposite way around. Just you can just uh, change it within the tool. So this is actually the idea. And this is not only calculate the distance. There is one thing I didn't show it to you. For example, we have two sheets being calculated, right? The first one called half to, the, to, to distance. Half distance, which is the first tool you use it. Right, let's take this one to the top and see what we'll get. Half to distance. See now here, yes, good. See now it's here showing that being created the lines from the dots toward the side. So this is, means those dots is being, for example, served by this particular side. And same here, these dots by this particular side, and these dots by the and so on. And all these red dots served by this blue dot as well. So this is actually one way around. And you have another method called shortest to line. Shortest, for example, here, shortest. Line. Between. This is also between feature. This is giving similar functions. For example, double click here. Again, it's asking you what is the source and what is the hub distance, source and the destination layer. For example, my source layer, let's again take the point, same exercise towards, for example, the sector, let's say sector points as well here. The good point is that what it's working also with polygons. So this is also good uh, points here. So, for example, here I'd like to calculate the distance to the next point on the feature. And what is the maximum? Let's give the maximum. For example, let's say you can define, for example, how much how, how much you would like to get. So I will just say, for example, two, or let's give it a three. And let's see what we'll get if you run it here. Okay, let's first hide this, the old one, which is called half the distance. Just, and let's now take the shortest line to the top and see what we'll get. See now, it's because I give three, I give three, so for example, it's running, as you can see here, lines toward this one, from the red dots toward this, the blue dots as well. So you can see. And if you right click here, make open attribute table. Let's see what we get as information. See, this is the ID. The ID is being repeated to each of those sides and calculated the distance and there, but the distance here is being calculated in degree. So this is maybe you need to do some conversion towards meters. So yeah, but I prefer to use the other method, which is called distance to the nearest hub. The next point I would like to highlight to you about, uh, for example, assume you have this kind of, of polygon. And you need to create a buffer. And this buffer might be required for any, any of your requirements or any request or task. For example, the buffer area, I assume this one red one, which I've been calculated here. Here, for example, I calculated was a smaller distance here. So this is, you don't need to do it manually. You have the polygon. So you can just go use again for the processing toolbox, one tool called buffer. If you just click here, buffer. And double left click. Then you, for example, here will give you information. What is your input layer? So my input layer will be this polygon, which is yellow, yellow color. Then I will select this polygon. And for example, here, this is in degree, this one in degree. So you just need to try until you reach to your target. For example, I'll give it all over in two, all over in two. Then I'll keep everything as it is. Maybe this one, uh, end cab style, which is the surrounding. I can make it as a square, for example. Let's try. Then I can just, let's run and see what we do. This one buffer created in the bottom left here. You can just rename it whenever you need. Then you can just take it to the top. See now, it's giving you almost the same, but let's hide this one and this one. Let's now try to modify the formatting. Double left click, see what we can get. I also need, I also need to close this one first. Double left click. Then here I need, for example, to remove the, the file, file style. I just need to make it no, no brush. Then this one for the style, I will keep it as it is, which is black. Then I'll just take this one as heavy size here. You can see we have it already surrounding here. And still you can increase it more. For example, last time I make it open to 02. This time, for example, you can make it open to 00. For example, 3 and also this, this one. And we can, for example, try to change this one and see what we do. So for example, here, let's, let's keep this one on the bottom right here, just to see. As example, you can see there is also another additional buffer called here. Being just let's rename the first one to to be in the to 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 be able to, to differentiate between both of them. So I'll just call this buffer one. Then buffer two is here now. Let's try to second see. See now I increase the buffer area. So you can keep playing with the parameters which you have it here. In this area, for example, change parameters. You can keep playing with this parameter segment and distance until you reach your requirement for the buffer selection. So let's hide this part. 
And actually, now the last part I would, I would like to, to explain to you, which is a quick one. In case you would like, for example, to draw some plots. For example, I have some data here, we have, which, which we remember from the previous session as well. This is coverage here, this kind of coverage which we have. Let's assume that you would like to get the histogram for this kind of coverage. So you can see I just searched in the top right here, processing both for processing toolbox for something called plots. For example, you have this, for example, let's say vector layer histogram. Let's click it. And this vector uh, layer histogram is asking you, okay, what is your input layer? My input layer, for example, not the buffer. I need to get this kind of coverage points, which is called N1, this one. And I need my attribute, to, for example, to be the coverage. It's asking you how many bends you, would, bends you would like. For example, I need five bends only. Let's see what we'll get. So if you double click this one, let's see what we'll get. See now it's giving you like this kind of histogram. And actually you can see this is your ranges for the coverage and the X axis. But if you go back, so for example, let's change the parameters here. So for example, I can give it as 20. Let's see what we'll get. Run. So again, it will give you another input here. Double click again. So it will be started changing again. If you compare these two, it's having now less inputs. For example, this is more inputs here. So you can just keep playing this one and you can just export it into image, for example, from here or take a snapshot and so on. This is just a quick one, but we don't usually use it a lot. So, but in case you would like to check. Actually, this was the ending of this, the complete uh, QGIS guide. This was ending. I hope if you like the complete contents for QGIS, you to share it with your friend and to subscribe to the channel and to share and like and drop a comments if you like and if you need any more requirements. Thank you a lot and see you in the next video.